Welcome to the fifth lecture on embed system design course. So in the last uh, lectures, we have discussed the unit one, which is uh, introduction to embed systems. So where we have studied about uh, the basic definition of an embed system and uh, the classification and characteristics of the embed system. And in this, uh, we'll be studying the, the typical embed system, which includes what are the different components of the embed system and we'll be studying each component individually in this unit okay and uh, in this the i said that uh, we'll be studying the components of the embedded system uh, the first one is nothing but the core of embedded system and next uh, we have memory and uh, the sensors and actuators and the other one we have is the the communication interface uh, in this uh, lecture we'll be studying more about this uh, core of embedded systems uh, which includes uh, the heart of the embedded system or we can say the brain of the embedded system why because uh, for any embedded system so the input need to be collected and that need to be processed and send the control signals to the output but uh, this processing will be done by the heart of the embedded system or the core of the embedded system we will be studying what can be the, the core of the embedded system in this unit so we will be seeing only few topics related to core of the embedded system in this lecture in the next lecture we will be studying uh, the other topics uh, also the, the memory part also in the next lecture and uh, this is nothing but a typical embedded system which includes uh, different components uh, in an embedded system. So here we have the system core. So this system core can be any of these. It can be a microprocessor. It can be a microcontroller. It can be an ASIC that is application specific integrated circuit, or it can be a FPGA that is field programmable gate array, or it can be a DSP that is digital signal processor, or it can be any SOC that is system on chip. So that can be the, the core of the embedded system and other components uh, which are in the embedded system are the memory. So this memory which will be storing the, the embedded firmware or we can say the software. So we'll be studying what are different memories in the, the next lecture and uh, the, the other input parts, other parts of the embedded system include input ports. So which are connected with the sensors. Okay, sensors are nothing but the will be sensing the input signal, input signal, and that signal will be sent to the the core of the embedded system. And next, the output ports of this uh, embedded system are connected to the actuators, so which will be actuating the signals the, which are coming from the the microprocessor. That is nothing but uh, it will be indicating a status or it will be controlling uh, some output. So it may be a buzzer like that which will be providing a sound uh, at some point and next uh, it uh, it also includes other supporting circuits or other integrated circuit or other subsystems which will be supporting this total embedded system next coming to the the core of the embedded system as i told earlier so it can be any one of this uh, microprocessor microcontroller uh, soc or a DSP or a ASIC or a FPGA. So we'll be studying in detail about that in this uh, uh, topic. So first, uh, the core of the embedded system can fall in any one of these categories. Okay. The first category is nothing but the general purpose and domain specific process. General purpose and domain specific process. The second one is the PLD that is programmable logic devices. And the third one is nothing but application specific integrated search that is ASICs and uh, the fourth one is nothing but commercial off the shelf components or we can call them as the COTS okay and uh, first uh, we have general purpose and domain specific processor so in which uh, we'll be seeing about the microprocessors, microcontrollers as well as the digital signal process in uh, general purpose so we can consider the, the microprocessors. Why? Because the microprocessors are uh, for uh, can do variety of tasks, can do 
variety of tasks you can find microprocessors in a laptop or a desktop so which will be able to perform many things or many operations you can do painting you can do documentation you can do or you can run a software you can play a game different things you can do with the, the microprocessor so that we call them as a general purpose processor so second we have microcontrollers so in the microcontrollers uh, so it depends upon uh, the where you will you be where you will be using that microcontroller if it is in a particular domain we can consider that under the category of domain specific process but if it is used for general purpose uh, generic usage then we can consider them under the the general purpose so it depend microcontroller will be depending upon uh, the usage we can consider under either the general purpose processor or a domain specific processor so other category which we have is the digital signal process so digital signal process are mainly meant for signal processing so where uh, the real world signals are analog in nature and uh, the processing can be done faster if we have digital signals so that uh, will be taking the dsps will be taking the input from the the real world and that is being converted to digital format so that the processing can be done by the dsp and after that conversion the the digital signal will be once again converted to the the analog signal and sent to the real world okay so that we will be getting the the modified output or we can say an efficient output so this signal process uh, wherever the signal processing is required we can go with the the digital signal processing so this will do the the digital signal process will do the the signal processing task very effectively and they are domain specific why because they are mainly meant for signal processing and uh, we'll be seeing about all these three in detail as we proceed so before going to that individual that is microprocessors microcontrollers and domain, uh, domain uh, that is digital in uh, digital uh, signal process we'll be seeing first about uh, the first, the category that is general purpose and domain specific process and after that we'll look into the the microprocessors microcontrollers and digital signal process okay and uh, coming to this uh, the first one that is general purpose processor versus application specific instruction set processor so earlier we took uh, that as the the domain specific processor but uh, here in the slide we are having application specific instruction set processor we can simply call it as a asip application specific instruction set processor so you can see here a note that is asip means a domain specific processor okay so whatever the domain specific processors are there we can consider uh, we can consider application specific instruction set process under that domain specific processor category uh, we'll be seeing in detail why it is called as a domain specific processor so coming to the first uh, we have the general purpose processor or we can say gpp so gpp uh, is a processor which is designed for general computational task as we have uh, as i have told earlier so the laptop or desktop we can do a variety of tasks or we can say general computational tasks okay and uh, these are produced in large volumes these are produced in large volumes and they are targeted for general market they are targeted for the, the general market as they are produced in uh, high volumes the per unit cost for a chip the per unit cost for a chip is low per unit cost for a chip is low compared to the other asics and the, the specific ics so asics will be studying uh, in detail as we proceed but asics are nothing but application specific integrated circuit by name itself you can understand that they are specific to the these ics are specific to the application so that uh, they are costly they are costly and uh, other specific ics also also costly as they are specific in nature they cost more and uh, why this uh, general purpose processors are less costly means so they will be uh, they are produced in large number and the cost will be coming down as they are produced in the the batches and next uh, we have the what we have in the the general purpose processor so what we have in the general purpose processor is nothing but 
as you know the arithmetic logic unit and the the control unit so any processor will mainly contain these two blocks uh, that is arithmetic logic unit and the control unit that is cu and uh, how these are different from the 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 domain specific processor so general purpose processor is nothing but they are designed for general computational task and they are produced in high high volumes and they are for the general market and uh, the per unit cost for this chips general purpose processor chips is low why because uh, they are produced in large volumes and uh, the as this cost is less compared with the asics and other specific ics and what do they contain is nothing but arithmetic logic unit and the the control unit and coming to the other category we have application specific instruction set process as i told earlier so these are called as a domain specific so why we why we are calling asip as the domain specific means so these are provided with the architecture and instruction set optimized to the specific domain or application specific domain or application so these are having the architecture and the instruction set which are optimized for that specific domain or application so that will be calling the the application specific instruction set process you can see here application specific application specific instruction set process application specific instruction set process so they are application specific and in the instructions for that also designed in such a way to perform those domains or domain related application domain related tasks or application related tasks okay so what can be the the domain specific domain related applications means or uh, domain or application requirement mean they can do network processing automotive or telecom media applications and uh, digital signal processing and even the control application there can be many more but uh, we have considered some of them so which are related to a specific domain a network processing or automotive domain or telecom domain or media applications or digital signal processing or control applications and going further asips are nothing but uh, so these are mainly meant for filling the architectural spectrum between the the general purpose processor and the application specific instruction set application specific integrated circuits that is asics as i told earlier asics are nothing but for application specific and these ics are specially designed for that application so that the cost will be more and uh, the general purpose process are nothing but for the general market and uh, they will be doing the the general computational task so there is a gap between these two the general purpose process which general purpose processor which can do general computational task and application specific ics which can do the the only application related operations so there is a gap between these two so this gap is being filled by the the asips that is application specific instruction set process so why we require uh, asip means so the traditional uh, general purpose processors that is gpps are unable to meet the increasing application needs suppose that we require uh, we require more uh, more effective way of uh, uh, effective way of representing an application or we can say more effectively performing that application so that cannot be done by a general purpose processor why because it is meant for all the applications so it will be doing uh, it will be doing as per the the constraints which are uh, related to that general purpose processor suppose that we require some of the application in a very effective way but that is not met by the the general purpose processor so you need to have an uh, ic or we can say you need to have a processor so which will be meeting those uh, needs that is uh, whatever the application you require so that should be performed effectively so for that you require an uh, processor so that is nothing but an application specific instruction uh, there is instruction set processor that means it will be performing the other task along with that it will be doing that application very effectively and you can consider some of the examples like uh, the microcontrollers uh, from um, there is atmel there is at automotive avr and usb avr so these are from atmel corporation and automotive avr is meant for uh, the automotive 
automotive applications and uh, USB AVR is meant for USB related applications and uh, we can consider system on chips digital signal process under the ASIPs category that is application specific instruction uh, set uh, process category uh, and also uh, ASIPs contain a processor and also other peripherals like on chip um, program memory and data memory why because the general purpose processor is nothing but just a processor so ASIPs include processor along with that some on chip peripherals so which are needed for the application requirement as well as they will consist of program and data memory next we have microprocess so in microprocess the microprocess is nothing but a, sing, a silicon chip which consists of a central processing unit and it is able to perform arithmetic as well as the logical operations according to some predefined set of instructions so it may be specific to a manufacturer the instruction set may be specific to a manufacturer why because intel will be using some set of instructions and uh, if there is another vendor like amd so they will be using some separate set of instructions okay so it is based on the the manufacturer there will be some instruction set and according to that so they will be working on and uh, as we have discussed there is it is it consists of a cpu that is having a alu that is arithmetic logic unit and a control unit along with some working registers and uh, it is called as a dependent unit microprocessor is called as a dependent unit why because it requires uh, the other hardware like memory timer unit interrupt controller and many others are needed for making it uh, for the proper functioning so it individually cannot work as uh, a computer or we can say a laptop or a particular unit why because it need to be connected with different peripherals so in order for the the proper functioning so that it is called as a dependent unit and uh, intel is the one which uh, which is having uh, the first microprocessor or which uh, developed the first microprocessor unit uh, which is nothing but intel 4004 and uh, it's a 4 bit microprocessor it's a 4 bit microprocessor which was uh, released in 1971 so later we have different uh, microprocessors from intel like uh, uh, intel 4040 intel uh, 80 80 intel 8085 intel 8086 so we have uh, studied also about 8086 in uh, microprocessor and microcontrollers so which is a 16 bit microprocessor so later we have also many other processors and at the present day uh, we are using uh, core i3 i5 and uh, i7 and i9 processors so before core i3 or we used to have core 2 do or dual core and before that we used to have pentium 1 2 3 4 uh, versions uh, versions from the intel corporation so these are different uh, versions of microprocessors from intel so we have other uh, other manufacturer also or other vendors also uh, which produce the uh, or which manufacture the the microprocessors so they include uh, amd uh, freescale ibm texas instruments uh, cyrix hitachi nec lsi logic so these are other players along with the the intel so which will be designing and manufacturing the ic's that is a microprocessor ICs and uh, coming to the next one uh, we have the microcontrollers microcontrollers and in this uh, this is nothing but a it is also a integrated silicon chip integrated silicon chip so which consists of CPU so up to this part it is same like a microprocessor itself but along with that it is having some other components which are a scratch pad RAM special and general purpose register arrays and uh, it consists of on chip rom or flash memory and next uh, program uh, which is used for program storage uh, and we have timer and interrupt control units 
and also dedicated IO ports. So all these are not available. Only CPU is available in the the microprocessor where uh, it has having arithmetic logic unit and control unit. And uh, we don't have the other peripherals like on chip ROM or flash memory or uh, we have or we don't have the scratch pad RAM or any other uh, timers and uh, timer and interrupt control units are not available even the ports so for by for which we'll be connecting inputs and outputs are also not available in the the microprocessor so, but all these are available in a microcontroller along with the, the CPU. So we can say that uh, the microcontrollers are nothing but microcontrollers are nothing but the it is a superset of the the microprocessor. That means if we consider if we consider this as the microprocessor, then uh, this can be considered as a the microprocessor. Why? Because so whatever the microcontroller have is. It consists of a processor along with the other peripherals which we have discussed now. So microprocessor only consists of the, the, the central processing unit or we can say arithmetic logic unit and control unit. So microcontroller consists along with this we have other uh, peripherals also. So that we can say microcontrollers can be considered as a superset of the, the microprocessors. And uh, microcontroller can be used for general purpose. So like what we have from Intel 8051. Uh, this is nothing but the generic. Uh, it can be used for generic applications as well as for domains. Okay. And uh, we can also have application specific microcontrollers also. So whenever we say application specific microcontrollers, it can be automotive AVR from Intel Corporation. So which are specially uh, designed uh, for the automotive applications. Okay. So I have said earlier when we are discussing about uh, the mic process, microcontrollers and digital signal process, the microcontroller can be called a general purpose and also even domain specific also. Why? Because uh, there are some ICs, there are some microcontrollers which can be used for the generic applications. So in that case, we can call it as a general purpose and whenever they are used for application specific or domain specific like automotive AVR from Intel. So we call them as a domain specific process, but uh, the these uh, micro controllers are uh, used in embedded systems rather than the, the microprocessors. So why? Because uh, these uh, don't require the additional peripherals like uh, the on chip RAM, RAM, uh, RAM, ROM, and uh, timer interrupt controllers, hyper ports, all these are readily available in the microcontrollers. So they can be used in the, the embedded system development. Uh, so these are preferred much rather than the, the microprocessors where all the things need to be integrated to, uh, to get the proper functioning. Okay. So this is the point what we have here. So microcontroller contains all necessary functional blocks for independent working. So they find a greater place in the embedded domain in place of microprocessors. Okay. So microcontrollers are preferred over microprocessors in the embedded system development. And uh, one more thing is that they are very cheap and cost effective and also they are readily available in the, the market. So these are the other reasons uh, which can be considered uh, for the embedded system development okay and uh, we have the first uh, microcontroller from texas instruments it is uh, nothing but tms 1000 okay there are even uh, the other microcontrollers uh, which we know it is uh, a051 intel a051 is nothing but the industry standard uh, microcontroller so we can also call it as mcs5 uh, a051 or mcs51 so which is industry standard so based on that, uh, there are uh, the other 8051 versions from different uh, manufacturers. So we have uh, 89C51 from Atmel, uh, 89S52 from uh, 89S52 from Atmel itself, but uh, it is a version of 8052. And uh, we have many others, uh, many other microcontrollers from the different manufacturers like uh, um, like from Texas Instruments, we have TMS 1000, TMS 2000 and others also. 
and uh, coming uh, to the next slide which is nothing but the differences between the the microprocess and microcontrollers so we have studied about microprocess and microcontrollers so as uh, as of now you will be aware of uh, what are the main differences between each of them so microprocessor consists of the cpu which is capable of uh, performing arithmetic as well as the logic operations and they will be having some predefined set of instructions and uh, microcontroller consists of all this which a pro which a processor have along with that it consists of other peripherals like ram rom uh, register arrays general purpose and special purpose register arrays and next uh, uh, flash memory also may be available depending upon the, the microcontroller and it also have the timer and interrupt control units and also dedicated io ports next uh, we can say that microprocessor is a dependent unit why because it requires combination of different peripherals for the the functioning uh, we can say this is a self contained unit why because it uh, it is already available with the the timers control uh, interrupt controllers and ert for uh, function that is communication so that we can directly use it uh, as a functional unit so that it is called as a self contained unit next uh, so this is meant for uh, general purpose in design and operation but uh, this can be considered a microcontroller can be considered as application oriented or domain specific so this is also one of the point in the the first one itself so it does not have an uh, built in io port microprocessor does not have an built in io port but uh, we need to have some ic for connecting or uh, we are having the the ports that is programmable peripheral interface or we can call it as a ppi uh, this chip need to be uh, interfaced with the 8051 to get the io ports but here they are available with the the ports for 8051 uh, we'll be having 8 bit ports uh, 48 bit ports so there may be uh, other uh, the microcontrollers so which can have 16 bit or even 32 bit ports also and next uh, so this is nothing but for uh, targeted for microprocessor are targeted for high end market where performance is important where performance is important uh, here performance may not be not so that critical but at the present day at the present day the microcontrollers are being also considered based on the the performance and next uh, we'll be having very limited power saving options on the the microprocessor uh, but coming to this one microcontrollers will be uh, having lot of power saving features why because uh, uh, will be using in embedded system development where it need to be powered with battery so that it need to save the power for having longer bat longer uh, lifetime so it need to include the or it need to use the power saving features so that is all about the differences between the the microprocessor and microcontrollers and coming to the the next one which is a digital signal processor so it can be called as a domain specific processor as i told earlier why because uh, they are mainly meant for signal processing so wherever we require audio video processing or any other type of uh, signal processing we will be using a uh, digital signal processor so what uh, what we can say about dsp is they are nothing but powerful special purpose uh, 8 bit or 16 bit microprocessors 8 bit or 16 bit or even 32 bit also uh, and they are uh, mainly designed for meeting the computational demands as well as the the power constraints of the the today's embedded video audio and the communication applications so why because audio video or communication applica applications require require more uh, more computations so that computational demands can be met by the the processor which can do the the signal processing so that is nothing but a dsp uh, as well as it also meets the power constraints uh, along with the the computational demands also and we can say that uh, this is two or three times faster than the the general purpose microprocessors in signal processing applications so along uh, in general purpose uh, processor will be having uh, will be having general computational task 
but it can't do effectively the, the signal processing task. So coming to the DSP, so this signal processing can uh, task can be done two or three times faster uh, when compared with a general purpose process. And uh, they will implement algorithms in hardware, so which speeds up the execution. So why this is faster means, so whatever the algorithms are there, they can be implemented in hardware, so which makes it faster in signal processing applications. So where uh, we can see in general purpose process, so this algorithm is run in the, the firmware or we can say software so that uh, there is a difference between this uh, processing speeds related to the signals. Okay. And next, uh, it can be viewed as the DSP can be viewed as a micro viewed as a microchip designed for performing high speed computational operations for addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. So in doing computational operations, we mainly require uh, multiplication and addition for signal processing. So this can be done effectively by using a digital signal processor. So coming to the different units present in a digital signal processor, we have computational engine. So this computational engine is nothing but a processor. So which is uh, meant for doing this computations or complex computations. So, so that instead of calling it as a processor, it is called as a computational engine. And next along with this uh, computational engine, we are having some program memory as well as some data memory. Why? Because as it is uh, doing lot of computations, it need to store the, the data related to that. And uh, that can be done by using the the data memory and the program memory is meant for storing the, the program and we also have an IO unit uh, for, for collecting the data from the input device and uh, the processed data can be sent to the output device so that uh, there is an IO unit and mainly we will be using this uh, uh, DSPs in uh, audio video signal processing as well as telecommunication and multimedia applications. So this uh, DSPs are very much uh, important in the, the, the video industry or uh, audio video industry or even in the, the telecommunications. And uh, the ex examples related to this uh, DSPs are we have Blackfin processors from uh, analog devices. So they are, uh, they are the, the DSP process. We have others also. And uh, coming to the microcontrollers, uh, we have the process uh, which which are made by the Freescale, Philips, next Atmel, Maxim and Microchip. So from Microchip we have PIC microcontrollers and uh, we have other topics uh, which are in this general purpose and uh, domain specific process. So they are, uh, they are first one is the risk and CISC architecture. So risk and CISC process we can say or controllers. Uh, coming to the RISC and CISC process, uh, the earlier from the earlier days we used it to have the, the CISC process, so which uh, used it to have complex set of instructions. That means it uh, used to have we can uh, consider the, the instructions to be uh, very uh, large in number, very large in number. Coming to the RISC process, so they used it to have very less in number. Why? Because uh, some of the instructions uh, are being clubbed together to perform the same operation as which we have seen in the the CISC processor. But as uh, the instruct as we they are clubbed, the number of instructions has been reduced in the the RISC process. Second one is uh, von Neumann and the Harvard architecture. So von Neumann architecture is also called as the, the Princeton architecture. So the difference between these two architectures is in von Neumann architecture, so we used to have a common bus for both program as well as the, the data. So the processor will be connected to the program, uh, program memory or data memory by using a single bus. So the transfers between uh, the processor and program memory and data memory cannot happen at the same time. The processor can transfer, uh, the data can be transferred from program member to microprocessor or uh, the data memory to microprocessor uh, 
only at a time that means when it is uh, uh, when the transfer is going from program memory to processor so it can't uh, the data memory cannot transfer any data but coming to the the harvard architecture the advantage is that it uses two different uh, buses one for uh, program memory and other for the the data memory so that uh, the data transfers between the program and uh, the data can happen at the the same time okay so that is the the advantage with the the harvard architecture coming to the other one we have big endian systems and the little endian systems and whatever the systems uh, which we are using uh, in our laptop uh, that is from uh, intel are nothing but little endian systems so big endian systems are one so where uh, the where the process uh, where the processor higher higher order of data byte is stored at the the higher memory and lower order of the data byte is stored at the the it is just below the the higher that is higher memory and coming to the lower order of data uh, at the higher memory and the higher order of data byte at the location just below the higher memory so you can think that uh, the data the stored in the first one is nothing but the big endian system and the second one is nothing but the the little endian system so if we consider an example the the data if you take so some data is stored at 2000 location the the data is nothing but some 2345h so 2345h so it will be stored in the the consecutive locations that is uh, to, from 23 2000 2001 2002 2003 that is 2345 will be stored into 2000 to 2000 three locations but uh, if we take the, the big endian system it will be in reverse okay the data will be stored like uh, 5432 uh, so that is how the data will be stored so that is the difference between the big endian and the the little endian systems so in the next session will be see also we have other type that is uh, other topic under this category that is nothing but load store operations and the the pipelining feature so load store are nothing but uh, the data will be uh, stored the data will be stored and then it will be sent for the the processing that is loaded and next uh, it will be stored and next coming to the pipelining uh, pipelining means whenever uh, the data when one data is being processed the other will be fetched and other will be executed so this all things will be happening in parallel so that increases the execution speed so that is uh, coming to the load store operations that is nothing but uh, the data is being loaded and then uh, the computation is being done and it is stored so that also makes the the processing faster and uh, in the next class we'll be discussing about the the or next lecture we'll be discussing about the the programmable logic devices